Hi everyone, this is Trisha Wolfrey from Your Empowered Self and this is my podcast, How to Manage Stress. And today I'm in conversation with Sally Sidani Wilkinson, who is a health practitioner specializing in menopause. Now menopause seems like a kind of hot subject at the moment, maybe even a bandwagon, but actually it's, it's something that has been around for millennia, but it's misunderstood. So today we're going to kind of bust some of those myths and also help people to understand it better and deal with it better more importantly. But before we do that, I'm going to ask her what it is that stresses her out on a day-to-day -day basis. Hi, Sally. Hi there. Thanks, Tricia. <laughs> yeah, so what stresses me out on a daily basis? I would say it's it's deadlines. Ah. When, I'm, when I'm juggling a lot of things and I've got a lot of deadlines all at the same time, or if I've got a deadline that's sort of brought forward, because I like to be prepared, I like to be organised, I like to be on time. So when I get all this sort of bombarded with lots of different deadlines all at the same time, sometimes I can get overwhelmed and feel very stressed by that. Um, you know, get that sort of feeling of the racing heart and just feeling a little bit sort of overwhelmed and panicked. And and that's actually not productive. You know, you, you lose focus, you lose concentration when you are sort of, you know, trying to do lots of different things. So the way I try to handle that is, first of all, take a step back and just do some some breathing techniques. You know, I know you love breathing techniques as well, Tricia, but it's something that really works for me personally is just taking a step back taking a few deep breaths you know deep belly breaths uh, and sort of calming myself down and then lists I'm a big one for lists as well so I've got my, my whiteboard here always on the go so I can <laughs> sort of write down my, my different tasks and my different like uh, different deadlines um, and then prioritize them and then I feel sort of in control and I can just work through them methodically in terms of what the priorities are um, and that re really, you know, sort of does help me to to relax and de-stress de and take control of the situation. Yeah, I think this is something that's really common to to many people. And and I guess, uh, and yeah, breathing is, it, it, you know, we all breathe, don't we? But we don't breathe properly. So yeah. stress, the way we breathe can be create more stress or help. So focusing on breath, uh, but also with deadlines, some of them are imposed by, on us, some, is, some of them are created by us, mm -hmm. some aren't really deadlines, they're just somebody's preferences. So, you know, being able to take a step back and look at, well, what's really important here? Or what is the one thing that will make the biggest difference? Because we can't do everything at once. Yeah. And um, sometimes it's, you know, doing the thing that's going to make the biggest difference or the one that's most urgent and most important. Exactly. Uh, because I think sometimes do the kind of loudest one, that, which seems urgent, but actually it's not really important. But they do it to get it out of the, out of the way. But really being able to do that prioritization and lists is getting it out of your head and onto a piece of paper. So you've got clarity you can see in front of you. Um, rather than having all that cl mind clutter, which is um, creates brain fog in a way, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. You're right. It's, it's the clarity, isn't it, that really yeah. helps, you know, getting that clarity and then you can just refocus and then you're much more productive afterwards. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, menopause. <laughs> yeah. It does feel a bit like a bandwagon at the moment, doesn't it? But but it's a real thing. So I know some people think women are making a big fuss about nothing and some women are really struggling. And I was very lucky I, I sailed through. Um, well, did I sail? I don't know if we, anybody sails, but you know what I mean. I didn't struggle too much, but yeah. it's a really, really tricky issue with some people. So do you know, um, well, let's let's talk about what it actually is, first of all. Yeah. So when we talk about menopause, menopause is actually a single day in time. I think some people don't sort of don't realize that it's a single day in time when a woman hasn't had a period for 12 consecutive months. But really what we when we talk about menopause, we're talking about perimenopause and postmenopause. So perimenopause is the time leading up to the menopause where your periods start to change in nature your hormones start to fluctuate so your sex hormones estrogen progesterone testosterone they start to decline and fluctuate and that's what's causing the symptoms and perimenopause can last for, for months or it can even last for decades you know it can be some women have sort of 10 or 12 years of perimenopause symptoms before their periods um, do finish and every woman is different I think that's a really important thing to note is that every woman is different and so you know there's no one size fits all when it comes to menopause you know you said you had a relatively easy menopause which is fabulous um, 
and some women don't, don't get any symptoms at all. So 75% of women will have symptoms. 25% of women will have debilitating symptoms, you know, to the point where they have to give up their jobs or they have to take sick leave. Um, they can't get out of bed some mornings. You know, the, the symptoms, there's over 40 different symptoms. And so, you know, every, every woman will have different severity of symptoms, different type of symptoms and, and get them at a different age. And I think that's, you know, one of the myths as well. You know, a lot of people say, oh, I'm too young to be in menopause. Well, actually, no, you know, you can get your menopause at, at any any age, you know, 30s, 40s, even teenagers have been known to go through the menopause. So I think it's really important that every woman is aware of what it is, what the signs and symptoms are, and are prepared for it. You know, it is a, a natural part of life, and it, it shouldn't be something we fear. I think that's what's happening. You know, you, you, you know, mentioned earlier in terms of it's a bit of a bandwagon at the moment. And I think that's, you know, the media have done that. I think it's it's fabulous that we are talking about it more now. And it's not such a taboo subject. I think that's fabulous and that I'm trying to do the same thing but you know we don't want it to be treated as a, ba a bandwagon it is very serious um you know it's, it's a natural phase of life but for some people it's really debilitating and we need to take it seriously yeah um so I think there's that sort of middle ground where we don't want it to be seen as hype or you know a bandwagon um, we need to find that middle ground where everybody has a you know a very good foundational education and knowledge of, of what it is for either for themselves or for other people going through it. I think, you know, that's important to know. So it, it does affect everybody. If it's your partner going through it, if it's your mum going through it, if it's a work colleague going through it, you need to understand it so you can support them through that. Absolutely. Cause, uh, because, and, and work as well. So uh, work is if the, your employers are affected and the team that you work with are affected and your partner and, and family are affected as well. So the more people understand and, on, uh, what's going on and why it's going on and what they can do about it then it kind of eases the whole thing because I think what I've noticed with some women is they feel uh like you know they they berate themselves so much for not being on the ball all of the time um and um <clears throat> sorry I've got a bad cold <laughs> oh. it just keeps catching my throat occasionally and um and they, you know, they they guilt trip themselves about it. But I think if if everyone was just a bit gentler with themselves and understood it better, they would uh, sail through it with more ease. So not necessarily without any symptoms, but they would know what to do about it and not beat themselves up about what's going on. So let's just cover off, Sally. What are the? Uh, you, you said there were so many, and I, I'm aware, but there is some really common ones aren't there in fact you know what we'll do let's include a list of symptoms in in the details uh but let's just do um the main ones verbally now yeah absolutely so there's 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 physical symptoms emotional symptoms and psychological symptoms they're sort of the, you know the different areas so in terms of physical symptoms it can be anything from joint aches and pains muscle pains um dry eyes the dry throat you know you, you said you've got a dry throat there that's really common you know i'll, I'll find i'm doing presentations i get a really dry throat maybe i've still got it then <laughs> yeah maybe <laughs> So because of the decline of estrogen, you see, with estrogen oh. lubricant, so we get the dry eyes, the dry hair, the dry throat, etc. Um, hot flushes, you know, I think hot flushes is the most common symptom um, in in women, and I think you know a lot of people when we talk about um, menopause, a lot of people think it's just hot flushes. Well, yes, that is the most common symptom, but it's not just that. Um, and hot flushes, some women, you know, feel like the, the, the temperature is rising in their face, and they feel very you know hot in the face other women it's it's the whole body you know they feel sweat dripping down their back and you know if you are in a working environment if you're giving a presentation or something and you're literally sweating profusely it can be really embarrassing and awkward you might need to leave the, a meeting room because of you know you're feeling so hot and overwhelmed by it so when I say it's debilitating those are the sort of things that happen um, so there's sort of some of the physical symptoms in terms of emotional symptoms, low confidence, low self-esteem, low mood, irritability, anxiety. 
So, you know, there's a whole list of symptoms. And as I say, every woman is different and they'll get a different you know, combination of symptoms and they change over time as well. You might find one month you've got one symptom, two months later, you've got a different symptom. So it, it does change over time as well. I didn't know that, I, I, I didn't know that you had changing symptoms. Um, but I, what I would do want to say is so, some are uh, just to a smaller degree and some to a greater degree as well. So um you know just bearing that in mind and I think that anxiety is a big debilitator for people uh isn't it I yeah think. no absolutely anxiety is a big one as well as irritability and you know the rage we call it the rage because you, yeah. you can't control it you just feel yourself like literally the rage r rising in you and again it's because of these hormone hormone fluctuations yeah yeah so what is the link if it's not obvious but just to make sure we're making the link as it's in how to manage stress uh what is the link between the menopause and stress yeah it's really interesting actually because it's almost like a two-way thing it's like mm -hmm. menopause can cause stress and stress yeah. can cause menopause so yeah. you know they're both really inter interrelated so if we start off with uh, how menopause causes stress you know I think you know when we're going through the menopause as you say you know there's so many different symptoms which can be embarrassing you know if you're sweating or if you you know you're having difficulty walking or you know it can be really embarrassing or it can really affect your work if you haven't had a good night's sleep it's going to be very difficult for you to perform at work the next day um, and then you feel this pressure, you know, if, you, if you're not working well, you know, you, you're really worried. Do I tell, talk to my boss about it? Oh, gosh, gosh I'm un underperforming at work. So, again, that can really cause stress because you're panicking about how you are perceived by others. You know, am I doing a good job? What do I look like to my my other work colleagues or to my family members? If I'm irritable with my kids, what do they think about me? So all of this sort of, you know, this accumulation of the different symptoms, as well as the physical symptoms, which can cause, you know, pain and discomfort, they all sort of build up to cause this this stress yeah. um, as well as it being a you know a difficult time of life. You know, generally women will go through perimenopause and menopause in their 40s and 50s, which you know, a lot of women, they might be bringing up kids or teenagers, they might have elderly parents that they're looking after juggling careers, home, you know, it can be that sort of, you know, accumulation of lots of different things that you're juggling and um, at the same time, adding up to adding on to your, your stress um, as, as well. Yeah, it's a vicious circle, isn't it? It's uh, yeah. so, so let's, let's help people with some tips on how to manage that vicious circle. Yeah. What so tips? Yeah, so just before we go into the tips, just to sort of explain how the stress impacts um, the menopause. So what people might not realise is when we're stressed, it actually exasperates our symptoms, which is why the tips are really important, because we need people to to reduce their stress levels, manage their their, their stress. Uh, we can't avoid stress. Obviously, it's, you know, it's part of every, everyday life, but it's how we manage stress is really important because what happens is, course, as you know, like cortisol is, released when we're stressed um, and cortisol is prioritized over all other bodily systems so when cortisol is is released because we're stressed it suppresses our immune system it, it suppresses our digestive system and importantly for menopause it suppresses our reproductive system so it suppresses all of our estrogen progesterone and testosterone even further and it's that that then can either trigger our menopause sy symptoms or exasperate them so you might find you know, well, you know if it's very common if if your symptoms if your symptoms are made worse it might be because you're stressed and yeah. a lot of people I speak to you say you know could could it be because of stress that you think your symptoms are bad at the moment and they say no I'm not stressed I'm not stressed but when we sort of dig deeper into it and we start to talk about what's happening in their lives with their family or, you know, the kids and things like that, it often actually transpires. It's like, such they are an wondering. interesting point, isn't it? Because people tend to power through stress so they don't know they've got it. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm pleased to hear that you say that you, when you delve into it, you uncover that they are in more stress than they, they are, they realise yeah. Or thing to admit maybe sometimes you know we don't have to be all powerful and all doing and all being uh, no. it's not possible absolutely and I think that's what's important you know as a, as a health coach we look holistically at the body so it's not just looking at one factor you know we look at the whole body and stress is a big 
big factor of that. You know, we look at nutrition, exercise, self care, and and stress management is is a part of that as well. Because it's yeah. you know, this is why I I kind of wanted this podcast to be about stress because it kind of impacts everything and everything impacts it. It's yeah. kind of a central theme, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. and yeah, I think we're exposed to more stress than than ever before. Really, you know, our generation. Really, honestly, I've been around a long time, so I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in the old days. <laughs> No, okay so let, let's have a look at some of those tips yeah so top tips I think you know we talked about breathing I think that's you know a really quick easy free thing you can do anywhere you know if you're stuck in a traffic jam and you're getting stressed out or if you're late to, to pick the kids up from school or you've got a deadline I think you know you can just just remind yourself of you know just do some simple breathing techniques I use the four by four so breathe in for four hold for four breathe out for four and yeah. just it's for the square model and I think that's you know really effective way you can do it absolutely anywhere on, on the go can I just interrupt uh, absolutely that's a brilliant technique and the, and the reason this is important is that most people when they're stressed they kind of just breathe to here mm -hmm. so there's no oxygen that goes into the body which exacerbates stress it exact exacerbates anxiety um so you know box breathing there are lots of breathing techniques and I'm, I'm going to be doing another podcast about that as well um so making sure that when you breathe it actually goes into your lungs and the holding it for four keeps it in your lungs for a while this is how we're supposed to breathe yeah, so, yeah I just wanted to clarify that oh thank you that's great feedback um, and then, yeah, movement and exercise, I would say, is my sort of second tip. It's really important to, to get the body uh, moving and blood circulating around the body when you're stressed to help you go into rest or digest mode to, you know, to relax the nervous system. So, you know, even if it's just a 10 minute walk, you know, again, when I'm, I'm feeling pressurized with with deadlines and things, it's like I love to go for a walk. It's all, yeah, it's a non-negotiable for me, I like just getting outside and getting some fresh air and you know, it's counterintuitive if you're really busy, you think I need to keep going, I need to keep yeah. going. But actually just 10 minutes away from your desk or from whatever's happening in, in your life, get out, get some fresh air and go for a walk and move your body it can make such a difference. You come back rejuvenated, refreshed and refocused, ready to go again. So yeah. you've got um, more energy, more clarity. It, it It's it's the gift that keeps on giving, isn't it? Yeah. Just, just having that space away from all of the, uh, the stresses. Yeah. And, and finding exercise that you enjoy, you know, it's not every, the gym isn't for everybody. It's finding movement and exercise that you enjoy. If it's, you know, going for a walk or if it's a, a bike ride with the kids or the grandkids or, you know, yoga. I love yoga. That's fantastic for stress ma management as well. So just finding something that works for you because you're not going to stick with it. If you don't enjoy that particular piece of exercise, you're not going to do it and it's going to feel like a chore. So finding something that you really enjoy you know, do it with your friends or your family and and really make it part of your life. I think that really sort of does help with, with stress as well. And, and with like, with movement, I like that you call it movement, you know, even um, cleaning your house, you can have fun doing that and that's movement. So putting on your best music uh, that really kind of energizes you yeah. and seeing it as part of your movement and self-care as yeah. well as taking care of the home, that kind of kills two birds with one stone I don't think I like how you, that I use the word kill in there but you know what I mean yeah you know <laughs> dancing, things at dance once. around the kitchen you know it's a great yeah. way for stress relief and feel good yeah yeah those windows <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay. um anything else um, so nutrition, obviously, I'm a health coach. So nutrition is, is a big part of that, both in terms of helping with your menopause symptoms, but also with stress, making sure that you're reducing sort of ultra processed foods, which are full of, uh, you know, chemicals and artificial preservatives, high in fat and sugar. So focusing on a, you know, a nutritionally dense diet, loads of fruits and veggies, loads of whole grains, high in protein, making sure you're getting sort of those whole foods into your, your daily routine really is, is really important for your overall health and well-being, as well as your menopause and your stress as well. Yeah. So I always sort of say a Mediterranean diet is a, you know, a good place to start eating lots of different colors of the rainbow is, is a good place to start. Yeah. And not ultra processed or cracking that down as much as possible. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, I think something else to to do uh, is to think about, you know, this is a stage of your life. It's a chapter and what you would like the next chapter to be like, you know, who you would like to be in this chapter. It's it's not the end of your life. It's like just the beginning of the next phase. Uh, so I think that's a really good attitude to uh, to take into it as well. 
um, and yeah. maybe set some boundaries with people um, so that you don't have to the, be the beer and doer of all things anymore. Absolutely. You know, now is the time for your you for you. You know, it's like yeah. learn how to sort of delegate and ask for help. It's you know, it's not embarrassing asking for help so that you can carve out time for yourself to make time for your self-care, for your exercise, for your, your meditation, whatever you know, whatever it, it might be. So no, absolutely. And we yeah, I think there's a lot of doom and gloom around menopause at the moment. But actually, you know, it's we're in our midlife. We've still got, you know, another half of our lives ahead of us, hopefully. Yeah. Um, and exactly. so as, as you say there's lots of opportunities ahead you know the, the Japanese call it the second spring which is such a lovely way of, of calling menopause because it is oh, out beautiful you know, yeah isn't it it's like you I've know it's heard looking that before. Actually, yeah the second spring so we've got all those opportunities ahead of us and as you say you can sort of reshape the second half of your life in terms of what does that look like for me yeah yes exactly yeah uh, I'm just reflecting. I wonder, because I kind of think that way anyway. I, I wonder if that's what made it easier for me. Who knows? I might have just been in that percentage where it just was never going to be a big deal. Uh, I did I did get the hot sweats, but they weren't debilitating. They were kind of annoying, but mildly annoying. Uh, and that's it. But I do have this attitude. Okay, so this is where I am. What do I want that to look like? Uh, how am I going to make it happen? what attitudes do I need to change as well you know those kinds yeah. of things are all, all good things to, to think about yeah and you know because you do the you know the breathing techniques and you're very good at you know managing your stress and self-care and looking after your nutrition and, and exercise and things absolutely you can you know really reduce the severity of symptoms by by getting all of that right and putting all of that in place yeah absolutely okay so what about tips for people living with somebody who has uh the menopause yeah so I think it's you know first of all normalizing the conversations as you know we talked about earlier it has been a, a taboo subject subject for such a long time and I think you know still a lot of women feel awkward or embarrassed talking about it but you know we shouldn't do it. it's a natural part of life and you know I would encourage people to start those conversations um so if you're you know if your partner is is going through it or your mum's going through it so it's like just openly start the conversation obviously don't you know, just go in in like a bull in a china shop saying oh i think you're menopausal you know ap approach it softly in terms of i've noticed some differently yeah sensitively exactly it's like you know show empathy you know I've, I've noticed some differences how you know how are you feeling just asking people how they feel can make such a difference you know yeah. if a woman feels listened to it yeah. you know it, it can really really help because they feel supported they feel they can talk about it openly so I think talking about it is is really important and then you know I think everybody needs to be educated uh, on what menopause is and how to support others that's why I do the corporate work as well go into businesses and help educate men and women about what the signs and symptoms are how they can support others how does it impact people at, at work because it's really important so if you you know your partner or your work colleague or one of your direct reports is going through it start the conversations and then understand how they want to be supported you know that the, the woman themselves will probably come up with some ideas of how they want to be supported you know we talked earlier about you know you might want to use the flexible working policy if if they've had a bad night's sleep or if you're you know if you're a, a husband and your your wife hasn't had a good night's sleep you know ask her if she needs any help that day you know is there any chores you could you know take off her or is there anything you can do to help her and just offering support really you know does go a long way um it, and then does it fall under the uh reasonable adjustments rule yeah 100 percent. it does let's yeah. explain to people what that means yeah, so reasonable adjustments in the workplace, you know, this is a, you know, it's a legal requirement and it's a health and safety requirement that your workplace do provide adequate support for you as you go through the menopause. So, you know, depending on what your symptoms are, for example, um, yeah, if, if you've had a poor night's sleep, you might want to come in later, use the flexible working policy to come in later. Or if you're struggling with anxiety, overwhelm, you might ask for a safe space where you can go and do some breathing techniques, do some relaxation techniques. So, you know, your office might want to consider having a, a well-being room or, a you know, a, a health 
health space where you can go and take some, some time out so it's, it's reasonable adjustments or if you've got hot flushes you might want to ask for a, a fan on your desk or to be sitting near a, a window or you might ask to sit near the bathrooms if you work in, a, in an office if you've got you know urinary problem tract problems or if you're getting heavy bleeding which is very very common you know flooding um, during menopause is common so you might want to be sit near the near the bathrooms or work from home that day if it is really you know debilitating so your your employer it does need to uh, take that into account and support you through that through those changes yeah and I, I think sometimes uh, partners will say something like so bring it back to partners uh, you're so emotional um that would be a really bad thing to say <laughs> yeah. you, because it's like accusatory yeah. Um, so what would be a better way instead is, and you know, they might be thinking that, but, uh, bearing in mind, they need sensitivity, they need to be heard. What would be a, a kinder way for a partner or a family member to observe the emotionality in somebody? Yeah, I think it's just asking the question. So, you know, say, you know, ask how they're feeling because then it then it will come from them and you can yes. then respond to that. So ask, how are you feeling? Mm. Um, you know, I've noticed some differences in your behaviour. You know, is everything OK? So sh showing that sort of sympathy, empathy and, and, and support and openness rather than it being a joke or rather than it being accusational. Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and uh, is there anything you need from me? And it might be time and space distance. It might be, yeah, could you do dinner tonight or or let's just go out or I just want to sleep. So you watch telly and I'll, I just want to I just want to rest a little bit or, you yeah. know, kind of asking what they need and being willing to do that, I think, is is really key. Absolutely. And asking, yeah. you know, if you if you were having a really bad day, what would you want? Uh, you wouldn't want someone to say you're so emotional or you're being horrible or or whatever. Uh, you'd no, need a bit of um, a bit of TLC, a, a bit of empathy, a bit of kindness goes yeah, a long way, doesn't exactly. it? Exactly. Kindness is quite curative, actually. It's it's yeah, quite it really it's quite is. medicinal. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. 100%, yeah. yeah. And I think that's important as well is to understand the the options to you to improve your symptoms, yeah. because we don't have to suffer in silence. You know, I think, you know, support is is fantastic. But, you know, there are things you can do to resolve your, your symptoms and I'll certainly improve, improve the symptoms. So, you know, educating both yourself, your partners, your colleagues of what is available to you. So understanding HRT, which is the medical route, understanding alternative therapies, you know, things like hypnotherapy, CBT, there's all sorts of other alternative therapies. I'm a health coach. So my, my model that I work with my clients is, is looking holistically at the body. So through nutrition and lifestyle, and you can eliminate your symptoms by getting that right and with a you know a personalized approach to that so you know don't, so don't suffer in silence it's really important that you do get the support and, um, and there are some natural remedies as well that can really help are there but I guess that's that would be very personalized so not a yeah. great idea to give it here but uh, speaking with a, a a trained coach can say what would work for you given all of the um all of your health uh criteria and any medications you're currently on that kind of thing no, absolutely. It's it's important to get a personalised approach because everyone has a different health history, diff on different medications, have different symptoms and different preferences. So that's why the sort of personalised approach is really important, and then you can get it uh, bespoke for yourself. Yeah, that's been really helpful. Are there any final tips, or do you think we've covered it? Uh, obviously, we can't cover everything in this limited space, but do you think we've covered the main ones, or is there something else you'd like to say? Yeah, I think, yeah, my, my th the three big ones really are the, the nutrition, making sure you've got a healthy, balanced diet, movement and exercise on a daily basis and self-care. You know, really put yourself first, look after yourself and, you know, put it in your diary, carve out time for your own self-care and whatever that looks like. You know, for some people, it might be taking a bath, for other people, it might be going for a walk. Whatever self-care looks like for yourself, do make sure you're carving out time for yourself so that you can reduce your stress yeah. uh, and uh, and help improve your symptoms and, and not comparing yourself you know like just because somebody else seems to be coping doesn't mean you have to be at the same level and you don't know what somebody else is going through either so things aren't always as they seem that's a really good point actually we never know what anybody else is going through so yeah. before before judging or you know it's just like really you know really understand what people are going through and ask the questions and try to support others and be kind brilliant 
Yeah. That's so helpful. Thanks very much. I hope I hope everyone's enjoyed this. I do ask all of my guests if there's a book that they've enjoyed, that they found inspirational or helpful, that might be helpful to others. And I think you've got something in mind, haven't you, Sally? Yeah. So this is sort of my recommendation. It's called You Can Heal Your Life um, by Louise Hay. Um, and I read this last year and it was literally life changing for me. I read it on holiday and I came back. Wow. like Almost like a different person. And it's all about positive thinking and it's about how through mindset you can have a much more positive outlook on life and therefore getting positive results. You know, it's like if your mind is positive, you will get positive results. Yeah. So wherever you, you know, you put your focus and put your energy that will work for you and that will grow. Um, so it was, it was just really insightful and there's lots of practical tips in there as well in terms of mindset change and positive thinking and um, the power of sort of controlling the mind. So that would be my recommendation. There's, there's a lovely quote and I don't know, I don't think I'm gonna do it justice, but it is from Louise Hay. And, and she says something like, um, something like when I have a problem, I change my mindset, my mindset, cha my mindset changes my problems. Um, which is kind of what you're saying in a nutshell, isn't it? Yeah. If I can dig out that quote, I'll put that in the link as well. So just to summarize, we will put in the in the links, we'll put a list of uh, symptoms so you can see where you're at. We'll put a link to, to Sally. So if you want to contact her, you can uh, put a link into the book and also the quote. Um, I hope you've all enjoyed it. Um, if you have, do please like and share. You never know when this might land at just the right time for someone else. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do. We cover lots of issues around stress. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Sally. Thanks, Tricia. You're welcome. Bye.